A creepy TV character, kind of like the Joker, tricks kids into following him into the woods and then he makes them disappear forever. This tale kicks off not too long ago when a couple of FBI agents, experts in spooky stuff, think ghost hunters but with badges, head to Connecticut. They're on a mission to figure out what really happened to a young boy whose life was cut tragically short. In the quiet town of Eastwood, Connecticut, a little boy named Andrew is having the time of his life, spinning around on a roundabout at the park, clutching his favorite doll, Chuckle Teeth. He's singing a little tune about his doll, totally in his own world. His mom, Diane, is there, pushing the roundabout, while another mom, Anna, watches her daughter play nearby. Suddenly, Diane's phone rings. It's some creep on the other end. While she's distracted, Andrew spots Mr. Chuckle Teeth peeking from behind a tree. He tries to tell his mom, but she's too caught up in her call. The moment Diane hangs up, she realizes Andrew has vanished. He's followed the eerie Mr. Chuckle Teeth into the forest, lured by the character's mysterious presence. But as Andrew ventures deeper, he senses he's not alone. Something else is out there. As night falls, the whole town is out searching for Andrew, including his dad, Officer Eggers. One of the officers, Wentworth, stumbles upon a broken Chuckle Teeth doll, a grim breadcrumb that leads him to a devastating find, Andrew's lifeless body. The discovery sends shockwaves through the community, especially hitting Andrew's dad like a ton of bricks. Enter FBI agents, Fox Mulder and Dana Scully, the duo known for digging into the weirdest of cases. They're called in because this isn't just any case. It's got a sinister twist, and Andrew's dad is a cop. The local police think a wild animal's to blame, but Mulder and Scully suspect foul play. Scully, with her medical smarts, points out that Andrew's injuries suggest he was murdered, not mauled. As they dig deeper, Mulder throws out wild theories about hellhounds and witches from the 1600s, while Scully keeps things grounded. They even end up in the morgue, poring over Andrew's remains, trying to piece together his final moments. They find mysterious white powder on his feet, adding another layer to the mystery. They're scratching their heads, trying to figure out how this doll fits into the scary event of Andrew's disappearance. Now, these agents, Mulder and Scully, stumble upon a clue. There was a kid, Emily, who saw something important, but no one had talked to her yet. This caught Mulder's attention, especially since Emily's dad is the police chief. Mulder thinks, hmm, something's fishy, and decides they need to chat with Emily after Andrew's funeral. While everyone's saying sorry for the loss, Andrew's dad, Rick, is upset. He wants to know why his son's body isn't being returned. The FBI thinks this wasn't an accident, but maybe a crime. Meanwhile, Emily's mom is wondering why the FBI wants to talk to her daughter, and her husband, the chief, seems more jittery than usual. At Emily's house, Mulder tries to get some info, but Emily's more into her TV show about fantastical creatures than chatting. Her mom, Anna, shares how scared she was when Andrew went missing because it could have been her daughter. While Anna steps away, Mulder snoops around and finds a book on witch trials, hinting the chief has a thing for creepy local history. Just as Mulder's about to leave, Emily points to the TV and says, the scary Mr. Chuckle Teeth was in the forest. This adds another layer of chill to the story. On the other side, Scully's talking to the chief, thinking maybe Rick, Andrew's dad, had something to do with the tragedy. But the chief is skeptical. They decide to confront Rick, who's already on a mission, thinking he's found the culprit, a man named Peter with a dark past. Rick races to Peter's house, convinced he's the villain with Scully and the chief right behind him. They find Rick ready to burst, but they manage to calm him down. Then, Mulder joins, and after a quick search, they find more creepy clues but aren't convinced Peter's their guy. Meanwhile, back at Emily's place, she's watching her show when she hears a giggle that's not from the TV. She turns and sees something shocking, one of the show's characters, but in real life, peering at her. Emily, a young girl who loved watching her favorite show about creatures called Bibble Tiggles. One day, while her mom Anna was calling her for lunch, Emily didn't answer. When Anna looked for her, she found out Emily was missing. Later, they found Emily in the forest, and it looked like something bad had happened to her, just like it did to another boy named Andrew. This made everyone very sad and scared, especially a detective named Mulder who had just met Emily that morning. Anna was heartbroken and angry, blaming her husband, the police chief, for what happened. Another officer tried to help Anna feel better, while Mulder found something strange on the ground a lot of salt spread around in a circle. Mulder thought this was a magic circle used a long time ago by witches to talk to spirits or protect themselves from demons. Mulder explained that in the old days, witches believed in special spirits called familiars that could look like animals or even people. These familiars could trick someone by looking like someone they trusted, like a TV character. Then, 
Mulder found a scary symbol of a skull on the ground, showing they were in a very old and spooky graveyard. Mulder talked to the police chief, who had been trying to keep them from finding out the truth. The chief knew someone was doing witchcraft, which led to the scary things happening. But instead of being honest, he tried to hide his own mistakes. Feeling really guilty, especially after his daughter's tragedy, the chief admitted he made a big mistake but said he wasn't the one doing witchcraft. He also admitted he had been bothering Deane, a lady who didn't want to talk to him, and was the one who called her before. Andrew went missing. Feeling guilty, the chief walked away, and other officers tried to make him feel better. Mulder then thought that maybe someone had cursed the town. While talking about this, they heard that Officer Eggers, who was really upset, was attacking a man named Peter. They rushed over to stop him from hurting Peter more. Mulder had to fire his gun in the air to get everyone's attention, and Scully, another detective, said she would arrest them if they didn't stop. For a moment, Rick, Emily's dad, seemed to calm down. But suddenly, he took out his gun and made a very bad choice that changed everything. Because of what he did, he had to go to court. Mulder and Scully, watching everything, couldn't believe what was happening and whispered to each other about the shocking events. Mulder believes there's a big problem with how a court case is going. He says it's not fair because either an innocent man suffers or a guilty one goes free. He thinks the real troublemaker is hiding among them. He tells his partner, Scully, about a spooky dog he saw. But he thinks the dog isn't the one causing all the trouble. It's just watching it happen. After court, they meet Officer Wentworth outside. He didn't watch the trial because he was finding out important stuff. He learned that Andrew, the boy who was hurt, was far away when it happened, so Peter couldn't have done it. Wentworth tells this to Mulder and Scully because he doesn't trust the local police anymore, especially since the chief seems to be losing it after his daughter Emily's sad fate. Meanwhile, Rick, feeling really upset, blames Diane for their son's death because she was involved with the chief. Diane leaves, upset, and while driving, she thinks she sees her son on the road, tries to avoid him, and ends up in a car accident. Rick, Wanting to confront the chief, breaks into his house but only finds the TV on and a scary character, Mr. Chuckle Teeth, that keeps disappearing. Suddenly, the chief shows up and a gun goes off. When Mulder and Scully get there, they find Rick has been hurt. They notice something strange, a circle of salt around the house. Inside, they see that a very important book is missing. On the other side of town, the chief finds Diane's car crashed but sees her standing in the forest. He follows. But it's not really Diane he's following because the real Diane is sadly no longer alive. He finds Anna, his wife, in a clearing, doing something very strange with the book. The big twist is that Anna was the one causing all the scary stuff with magic. She didn't mean to hurt Andrew and Emily. She just wanted to get back at Diane and her husband for keeping secrets from her. But things went way too far. Just when Anna was trying to fix her mistakes, a huge, scary dog appeared and attacked her husband, Chief Strong. Anna was really scared and screamed when she saw this happen. Then, Detectives Mulder and Scully showed up and saw Anna standing in a circle made for magic spells, with Chief Strong hurt really badly nearby. Mulder tried to convince Anna to stop using the magic book, but Anna felt she had to finish her spell to stop all the chaos she started. She kept going with her spell, and suddenly fire burst out, surrounding her. This was her way of closing the door to the scary things she accidentally let out. The police came to see what was happening, and Scully gave the magic book, which somehow didn't catch fire, to Officer Wentworth as proof of everything that happened. Scully then realized Mulder was right about all the strange things he believed were happening. In the end, Mulder and Scully left the town, hoping to leave all the weird and sad events behind them.